I hollered, shoot, seat belts. Then I pulled the chute. And that's just such a gorgeous feeling. <sighs> it is holding and we're going down on the chute, the whole pair airplane. And that was just a, such a beautiful feeling, a feeling of comfort and comfort and joy, you might say. We are here at Aero, the big show for light aircraft in Europe. And today's production is being brought to you thanks to BRS Parachutes, but we're talking to BRS Parachutes too. We have two representatives here. We have Frank Hoffman, the head of engineering for BRS in the United States, and we have Frank Miklas, another Frank, the head of sales in Germany. So welcome to both of you to Aero, your home country. Well, your home country too. That's, Frank is also German right. by history. Yep. So uh, today what we want to talk about is some changes that are happening for BRS parachutes in Europe. But let's go back in time a little bit. There was uh, many years ago, BRS had a very large presence in Europe with another gentleman named Jürgen Schubert. And now you have taken over the sales since when, Frank? When did you uh, get into this business? It was in the year uh, 2007. 2007, you got On into the Aero. At the Aero, okay. Excellent. Yes. And there's another gentleman we want to mention too. His name is Bernd Vogeli, yes. and he does all the service work, which is a lot of work because hundreds of systems were sold in Europe and, and heavily in Germany where parachutes are required equipment. It's mandatory here to have a rescue system, it's often called. There's some changes coming for products in Europe. Tell us a little bit about this. Yes, that's right. Thanks for welcoming us here as well. Um, some of the, uh, the changes that we are doing is actually bringing back some legacy parachutes that have been in service um, here in Germany for a while. They have been out of production, but due to the pretty high demand for those canopies, we are bringing back the old 750 and the 900 canopy, the BRS 750 and the BRS 900 as they used to be called here. We have had full certification in place. They have been latently resting for a while. Now they are coming back and um, there's quite a bit of demand for those types of parachutes. That is uh, one of the things, one of the changes we're anticipating to, to occur here within the next few months. Um, the second big thing is that we are actually uh, going to go for a speed increase for our highly popular BRS 1050 DAC, both in a canned and a soft pad version. Um, that is going to be very attractive for the more higher speed ultralights for which of course, there are no speed limits existing in Germany, and to um, uh, to, to account for those uh, for those higher speeds that a lot of aircraft are seeing now, we do want to offer a canopy that that has those higher speed capabilities as well. well let's do a little review. The, the 750 product you talked about that's for quite a small aircraft, and there's a new class you told me about, Frank, coming into Europe called the. I don't know if it's called the 120 class, but it's 120 kilos, which is roughly the American Part 103 type aircraft, very similar number, and those require a smaller parachute system like the 750. The size of the parachute is often a little larger than the weight it carries, uh, and that number relates to square feet, does it not? Um, in, in, in most cases, it does, that's correct. Um, there's also some other factors that play in, but for those old canopies, that's absolutely so, so the 900 parachute was the right size canopy for some of those early ones. But then they all got faster. And the gentleman who was uh, instrumental in bringing BRS to Europe, Jürgen Schubert, uh, went to BRS, I think, back when and said, we need, a, we need a bigger parachute yet for the 472 class that was coming. Uh, and it needs to be faster because the parachutes, or the aircraft are flying faster. So BRS developed a 1050 parachute. Correct. Yep. Yes. 1050, which um, which is being sold in Europe now as the 1050 DAEC. Ah, okay. Because um, the 1050 is sold in the U.S. as well, but under a different regulation. So, for example, 1050 in the U.S. is uh, certified or is compliant, you know, to be more precise, under the ASTM standard, which has different uh, factors that go into the certification than the 1050. Sure. And all the LSA parachutes That's that BRS sells, they meet the ASTM standards. Every single parachute we sell. All of those do. But the, uh, in uh, Germany, there's a separate set of regulations, and they're administered by the Deutsche Aero Club, which yes. is the DAEC. That is absolutely correct. OK, 
Okay, but now you're gonna uh, try and achieve some greater speed. Will that take more testing? It may or may not. Or you may do this by calculation. We may be on to something that I think with the existing data that we have, we can increase the envelope. That had based been, on the testing that has already been done. Based on testing that you has had already safety been done. And so that forth. is correct, and um, some of the factors that may not have been accounted for before. It all looks good right now, and we're in some final discussions with the DAC to get this accomplished. Let's cover the weight ranges of airplanes. You've got a small parachute, you've got big parachutes, and everything in between. Hit the line of weights that the parachute systems can handle. Our smallest commercial off-the-shelf product is the PRS 600, capable of handling 600 pounds or less. Then we, uh, we go up with the PRS 800, the 1050 models, 1350, 1350 high speed. Um, and what are those used on? Those are used for light sport aircraft, 1350 uh, weight range. The, the high speed, as the name implies, of course, covers a, uh, a higher velocity, higher, higher speed range. Okay. The, the, the speed uh, envelope is, is being increased. Above and beyond that, we've got 16 and 1800s that could be used for aircraft around 16, 1700 pounds. Like experimental range. amateur built. Perhaps. We'd be looking at experimentals, for like, example. Uh, the RV series. Absolutely I know perfect that's one example of the for that. That's you know, something we're targeting. Very popular, very popular airplane. And uh, in the MCR for France, that's, yes. uh, that's a faster airplane. It's a, it's a four seater, but it's quite a lighter aircraft. And then above that, if you're going into the uh, general aviation or the higher weight experimental class, um, is our very popular BRS 2400 canopy. That's used on the Cirrus, isn't it? It is used in the Cirrus series. It is used in the, um, the, the BRS 172 and the 182 STC products that we have. And above that, we also have a couple of other canopies in development. Um, that could serve even higher weight and speed range. The BRS has the capability to develop any type of parachute system that may be implemented by the customer. And to work with the airframe manufacturer in doing that, I know that's a... You can make the parachute, but the parachute has to go on an airframe and it has to work right, and that's a big part of the process, isn't it? I would even say that is the, that is the most crucial element. A parachute can be designed and built, that is one thing, as it is maybe airworthy as it sits on the table, but the trick is to integrate it successfully into an airframe to produce a system that has to, and I have to stress that, has to work when the handle is pulled. Because when the handle is pulled, that is the occupant's last chance of survival. And we cannot stress that with a large and strong Well, a perfect segue then to say, product has saved lives, a lot of lives. What's the current number today of lives saved by Vera's product? The current number? 294, and uh, all of those are documented saves. Very happy people to walk away and um, attribute and thank their lives to uh, to the efforts that our company has, uh, has performed. Now, those are not just pilots. Those are also people who are along with the pilot in the aircraft, correct? That is correct. It could be the spouse, it could be the children, it could be friends, family, anybody. So, um, all of those people are alive today because of the product that our company has built. For instance, uh, the last four that was uh, in Minnesota, in the, the north of uh, uh, Minneapolis, on uh, uh, Lake Dakota, a complete family was uh, saved by a BRS, by, by camps, father, mother, and children. So how does it make you feel when someone comes up to you and says, you just saved my life? Um, you, you see my, my, my hair. <laughs> uh, and sometimes you get these calls, I, I experienced this myself once, uh, typically on a Monday, because it's after a weekend when the air pilot is out flying. That is correct. So when we receive information like that, it makes us feel extremely proud, proud of everyone who's been in the all the, the workers who pack the parachutes, the designers, the sewers, the packers, the salespeople, everyone who was involved in um, to who these life uh, these uh, life saving they, uh, they, get, they get another chance to go out absolutely because of the work that you do. That's right. So that's great. Well, we've had a lot of information here about BRS parachutes in the U.S. about BRS in Europe. Uh, give us a web address where we can go find some more information. In North America, our web address is www dot brsaerospace.com And in Germany, do you have a web address also? Sure. And what is that? Uh, 
www.brs-sales.de or www.brs-vertrieb.de Okay, great. We'll put those up on the screen. Thank you very much for talking to us today. I have lots of information about BRS parachutes on my website as well, and the links to the uh, web pages you just heard at bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining us here at Aero. Keeping life in a good natured perspective is a common practice of pilots. Come on. Come on. Rancher and pilot Albert Colk will tell you that. Especially after the flying adventure he, his grandson Jordan, and two friends endured on a nighttime flight back from Seattle crossing the rugged Manishi Mountains in British Columbia. It was a beautiful night. You could distinguish that. You could distinguish the odd river and some water below, but that's about all. There was no moon, but a very bright, clear night. So everything was going well until uh, something went wrong. I had completely forgotten about the shoot right about then. And then he said shoot and I remembered and all of a sudden, just like everything kind of put it in perspective a bit. It was a lot nicer. You, you, you realize that you do have some security, some safety in that. I hollered, shoot, seat belts, and I pulled back the power, turned off the ignition and whatever needed to be done. Then I pulled the chute. There was a little explosion, which was good to hear. It's kind of loud, but it's good to hear that explosion. But what was even better to hear, when that parachute started to deploy. And when, when it first starts to deploy, there's that ring above that that holds it for a ways, and then it starts to deploy more and more. And that's just such a gorgeous feeling. It is holding and we're going down on the chute, the whole pair airplane. And that was just a, such a beautiful feeling, a feeling of comfort and comfort and joy, you might say. Albert's airplane floated safely to the ground. We got a great landing. The parachute hooked a tree and it brought us around really slowly and set us down on it was a fairly steep incline, but it was set us down in a really nice place. There was no trees. There was trees on both sides of us, but not where we landed. It was almost the perfect landing spot. And you all walked away. Yeah, everybody got out of the plane and walked away without a bruise, without a scratch, without anything. And what is your life worth? What is the life of your loved ones worth? The ones you carry, whether it's your grandson or granddaughter or child or girlfriend or wife? What's their life worth? Can you count that in dollars and cents? No way. Pull the chute, you walk away.